I previously made the case that there's a kind of golden mean when it comes to audio interfaces. You should get something in the middle, like Focusrite, Audion, SSL, Motu, that kind of stuff. And you should probably skip the stuff which is ultra cheap or ultra expensive. And of course, I got attacked by all of the people in the comments who love Behringer. And some people were saying that it's absolutely amazing gear regardless of price. And so I went out and bought this thing to see if that was really the case. And I put it through a few tests and I came to the conclusion that it was a piece of junk and we can just revisit the noise that it makes when you touch it to remind ourselves of that. So anyway, it wasn't only the Behringer fans who left grumpy comments on that video. Also, fans of high-end gear were also annoyed with what I was saying there because they thought that I was putting down their choices to get the high-end stuff and spend a bit more money on something a bit nicer. And that wasn't the case at all. I actually really like a lot of the high-end stuff. I've worked with RME interfaces, Lavery interfaces, and all of the high-end stuff is commonly used in mastering studios, and I love working with that high-end stuff. I haven't got a bad word to say any of about any of it. The thing is, I just don't know if I can justify the high cost because I don't see the benefits that I'm getting from spending all of that money. I think it's really nice, it's really beautiful, it's really pretty, really high quality, well built stuff that's great, it lasts a lifetime, and it's got the best support, the best drivers, all that. So everyone from who had an RME interface was saying, the drivers, the drivers, the drivers. Okay, yeah, sure, RME really support their customers, fantastic, everything's great. However, I just don't know if I can justify that cost when you can do the same job for a lot less money. But Prism Sound were kind enough to send me out one of their really beautiful Lyra units. And that was handled by ES Pro Audio, who are the distributor in Germany, who have all of the crazy high-end stuff. So thanks to ES Pro Audio for loaning me one of their units. This is just a two-channel interface, so it's got two mic or line or instrument inputs, and we'll have a look at the unit in a second. And it's also got four outputs, but it's essentially just a two uh, mic preamp interface. But this thing costs like two grand, a bit more than two grand. So this is really very expensive. Well, still, the most simple gold standard test to test the quality of an audio interface, both its line outs and its line ins, is to do a loopback test. You simply get patch cables, these are just unbalanced short guitar patch cables and anyone who moans about that and say that I need to use more expensive cables, shut up, it works, it's fine. You get the patch cable, you take the output and you put it into the input. And then you send audio out and you record it back in. And then you're testing the quality of the DA conversion and the AD conversion. You're testing both sides because it has to go out and back in. So you're testing everything. You're testing anything that's in the signal path that is gonna degrade the sound quality. The digital chips, the analog componentry, anything that's in that signal path that is running through, if it's degrading the sound, you're gonna hear it in a loopback test. So that's why it's the gold standard. It's a very caveman approach, but sometimes simple is good and works. So we did that with this interface and we heard that it turned the audio to shit within about 50 loopbacks or something. It wasn't very impressive at all. Then we used the Focusrite Claret interface and we could see that even after hundreds of loopbacks, we could get still a very good sound quality and it even, it had some kind of compressed weird sound going on, which is sort of pleasant in a way. It didn't actually sound bad after hundreds of loopbacks. It just sounded kind of compressed. And I was a, a bit surprised why it did sound compressed. Uh, it was a bit of a mystery, but regardless of why that was the case, it sounded sort of cool. Now, why don't we do exactly the same thing with this thing and see how far we get.
So there you go. I bet you weren't thinking that I was going to do 1,500 loopbacks with this. Actually, I was going to do more. I just left it on automatically going, doing the loopback test when I went to bed and I woke up in the morning and it was on 3,000 or something loopbacks, which is absolutely insane. But my computer crashed. It didn't like crash, but like Reaper was doing something weird and it, it like was, it just couldn't handle that amount of tracks. Now Reaper is great. You can just do like, unlimited whatever until your computer falls over and I think my Mac just couldn't deal with it because I'm just running a Mac mini it's an M4 Mac mini so it's exceptionally quick but I think playing like recording over 3,000 tracks that's a bit like uh, taking a mick a bit so um, at some point my computer wasn't having it anymore and then the audio was just super distorted and weird but that had nothing to do with the prism sound interface but listening to that, you can hear that there's almost no difference in sound at all, apart from after hundreds and hundreds, even after a thousand loopbacks, we're starting to get high frequency coloration distortion, and it almost sounds good. Like, I almost prefer <laughs> 1500 to the original, because it hypes up the high end, but in this, like, kind of, like, cool, distorted way. I would love a plugin that does that and I would use it. <laughs> like, I'm not recommending you go out and buy this interface so that you can do a thousand loopbacks to your track to uh, to get that effect because obviously that's just nonsense. But whatever that did to the sound, firstly, it didn't do a lot to the sound. It, it sounded incredibly transparent. And secondly, what it did to the sound after some ridiculous amount of loopbacks that has no bearing to reality whatsoever you can hear that what it did do to the sound was almost just pleasant like again with the focus right but the focus right unit would never get to a thousand five hundred but this did because the quality of this is just so ridiculously supremely off the charts i spoke to the um guy who worked at prism sound and he says yeah we we want to develop the interfaces to be like a wire I meaning just like a bare wire we don't want to hear it we want it to completely be transparent and we don't want to hear anything at all. Well, they did it because you can't hear anything at all. And anyone who comes along and says, ah, oh, I can hear the difference between a prism sound, Lyra or blah, 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 whatever, and whatever other high end thing. If it's high end like this, you can't hear shit. You're just hearing the original music. You are not hearing any difference at all because there is no difference because we can do 1,500 loopbacks and there's such a small difference after 1,500. Uh, the the kind of like after one loop back, after just playing through it once, and that is the DA and AD together. After playing just one generation of the loop back, you can't hear the difference at all between the digital signal and the loop back. There's no way after, like, maybe some people can't hear the difference after 500 loop backs. It, it sounds so transparent, it's mind boggling. I have no idea. And I did it at 48K as well. It wasn't like I did it at 192 or something. I, just bog standard 48K, nothing special at all. And it sounded so pristine. It's ridiculous. I've never encountered anything that pristine before. Normally, you should be able to get hundreds of loopbacks out of a decent interface, but that is just bonkers. So after saying all that, am I super sponsored by Prism Sound? And I've left an affiliate link below that you can click on and I get a cut. So I want you to buy the Prism Sound unit and I'm super biased and sponsored and got money. No, none of that. I think it is a wonderful product. It's fantastic. However, do you really need that? Who is going to do 1,500 loopbacks? Nobody. In my personal opinion, in modern times, unless you buy the cheapest, most plastic junk interface out there, DA conversion, AD conversion, it's a solved problem. You don't get much upgrade from getting something like this in terms of transparency because the mid-tier stuff that I've already mentioned is already transparent and nobody is hearing the difference and all of you guys who want to say yeah i can hear the difference between blah 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 no you can't you can barely hear the difference after 50 loopbacks with this thing well you can't hear the difference almost with 50 loopbacks it's almost impossible to differentiate you can hear the difference after a thousand but that's just nonsensical who's going to do a thousand with the focus right unit you can start to hear the difference after like 100 200 loopbacks or something it's a solved problem no one's doing 200 loopbacks you even in the most high quality 
uh, demanding analog mastering studio that has like their analog fancy equipment stuff. You're going out once and coming back once. You're not going around a thousand times. And so there's no perceivable difference between these interfaces. They're all transparent at that price point. This is borderline transparent. With one generation, you can't really hear the difference on this thing either. It's just it's just on that kind of borderline. It's not really high enough quality for me to like get behind and back. I'd rather just spend a few more quid and get something that doesn't look like it's fallen out of a Christmas cracker. It, it, but do you need to spend two grand on a two channel interface? So my opinion here might surprise you because although I think you should avoid the cheap plastic junk, anything mid tier upwards, like I've already mentioned those brands, it's all good enough. But it doesn't mean that good enough is necessarily what you want. Sometimes you just want to buy nice things. This thing here is one such thing. It's just a nice thing. It's high end and using it, you're using it and you're thinking this thing can do 1,500 loopbacks and it still sounds cool. I'm using really nice stuff. It looks really nice. When I touch it, it does kind of like nice sounding clicking noises and stuff and there's relays inside and it does fancy clicking noises. And I like that. And there's nothing wrong with spending a bit more money if you have a bit more money and you like nice stuff. I've got some nice stuff. Here's one of my Swiss watches. I like this watch. I spent more money on this watch than I spent on my iPhone. Does it tell the time better than my iPhone? No, it doesn't. It doesn't tell the time at all because it's stopped. I still wear it. I still like it. And it has a very much inferior time telling quality to my iPhone, but costs way more. And I'm happy with that because I like it. And maybe you like this. And so there's nothing wrong with buying it. But if you're going to come along and pretend to me that you can hear the difference or you think it sounds better, bullshit. No, it doesn't. It sounds remarkably transparent, but everything mid tier or above is transparent. This is more transparent, but the human ear can't perceive it at that point unless you're doing 1000 loopbacks, but no one's doing 1000 loopbacks. So there you go. This thing is amazing. I love it. It's great. It's built well. It sounds that it's just completely, it's the pinnacle of transparency. Prism Sound is the pinnacle of transparency. That's why it's used in all of the top mastering studios. There's there's nothing wrong to say about this at all. It's got instrument um, inputs on the front. And then when you turn it over, it's got line inputs on the back. And it's got XLR inputs there. But it's only a two channel in interface. So why has it got six inputs? Because each type of input has its own connector. And then you can switch between it in the interface and you get a direct pure high quality signal in the highest possible quality with the lowest possible noise rather than this piece of plastic junk you've got some sort of like switch stuff and you don't know if the button is in or the button is out and it's noisy sometimes if you press the button wrong and like you don't know and it's a combo thing that you you plug the instrument in there and it's an instrument one minute it's a line the next minute or it's a xlr that you don't know which is which and what button to press and it's, it's noisy they've obviously done it a lot better here and you have to pay a bit of money to get that quality there's relays inside there's some really nice digital connectivity on the back it's got a built-in power supply with an IEC cable and everyone who's moaning about built-in power supplies that they're noisy and it's a benefit having a wall wall or something well this thing certainly isn't very noisy at all when we heard that loopback test I wasn't hearing much noise after over a thousand loopbacks and I wasn't hearing any crosstalk at all and the channel balance after 1500 loopbacks was completely precise bang on in the middle there was no drift at all. It's so re outstandingly impressive, the quality of this unit. It's just absolutely remarkable. I love it. But you don't need it. There's no reason why you need that. You can't hear these improvements. That is the pinnacle of excellence. But you can't hear the pinnacle of excellence because whatever mid-tier focus right blah 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 has already exceeded the capacity for the human ear to even perceive the differences because it's already transparent. So the only reason why I'd say you should get one of these is just if you like nice stuff. 
It's like the watch. There's no reason to get this watch. You just use your iPhone. You don't need this watch. But I want this watch. So I bought it and I've got it and I like it. So what you're going to do, you, you can argue with me if you want, but you, you're wrong if you're going to tell me that I shouldn't have this watch. Of course I should have this watch because I want it. And anyone who wants this interface, of course they should have this interface because they want it. Do they need it? No, you don't really need it more than a focus right, but that's not the point. The point is sometimes you just want to have nice stuff.